Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we have another video from another channel. This is the Carolina Gamer. Now over on his channel, he has not only a focus on playthroughs, particularly solo playthroughs, but he also creates his own automas or solo AIs. And then he puts up videos showing you how to use them. So it's pretty awesome the stuff he has over on his channel. Be sure to go check that out. Click on the link in the description below so you can see what all he has on his channel. Here we go. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started. Fighter turn. We're going to do the threat phase. So we're going to reveal a card from the cartel deck. And this is on alert tactic. When a fighter moves into a space adjacent to Juan, he retreats three spaces from that fighter. If he retreated, Juan then gains two random defense tokens, unloads, and discards this card. So this tactic is going to go into the enemy play area. For my first step, remember I get three steps. I can move, I can play a card, and I can do an action step. I'm actually going to move three to go ahead and grab this loot. So I'm going to go one, two, three. When you grab a loot, when you step on a loot, you don't have to end your turn there. You just have to go through that space. You remove that from the game, and you draw a loot card. This one is Molotov Cocktail. Discard this card to choose a space within three spaces of you. Each figure in or adjacent to that chosen space is dealt three general damage. For my card step, I'm actually going to play a card called Infiltrate. It's a tactic and it goes into play. I can exhaust it if I'm unengaged to return one stealth card from your discard pile to your hand. And as an action, I can reveal the top card of any fighter deck then either put that card into play or discard it. Then you may discard this card to attack with two red dice dealing direct damage. One thing I did not note in the how to play is that cards with this little star by them means there can only be one of those in your play area under your control one at a time. So if I draw another infiltrate, I'm just gonna have to hold on to it until this card gets discarded. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust Zane to choose one fighter to draw one card and then shuffle one card back into their deck. So I'm going to draw a card. I get a recon. That is the second recon I have in my hand. So I'm actually going to go ahead and shuffle that back into my deck. For my action step, I'm going to go ahead and just gain two random defense tokens. So I'm going to take two white die. And I get two kick defense tokens. I'll place those here. So that is the end of my main fighter act phase. We're going to go to the react phase. And so all the cards from left to right in my threat area are going to activate. So pin down is going to activate. And it says, if you are not in a cover space, this card deals you one direct damage. If you are in a cover space, gain one random defense token. So looking at my character, I'm in a crate space. Once again, I have to be in a cover space. I am not, so I just, I am dealt one direct damage. So I'll place a damage on my character. And once again, you cannot use uh, defense tokens to block direct damage. We have to remember Zane. Zane says each time you suffer any amount of damage, you must discard one defense token or place one damage on this card. So I'm going to go ahead and discard a defense token. And in the draw phase, we will go ahead and draw. I have a Sonic Blade. Attack with two dice. Before this attack, you may discard up to three cards from your hand, your fighter, or your fighter play area to add plus one die to this attack for each card discarded. So Juan is going to activate, and he says, activate, if engaged, Juan attacks, retreats two spaces, and gains one random defense token. Well, he's not engaged with me. So otherwise, Juan gains two random defense tokens and moves up to three spaces to be within four spaces of the nearest fighter. So we're gonna gain, he's going to gain two defense tokens. He gets a grapple and a kick. Then we have to uh, 
move up to three spaces to be within four spaces of the nearest fighter. So to do that, he's simply going to be, he's gonna move one so that he's one, two, three, four spaces from me. Next, we're gonna activate the carbon. Activate, if this card has no power on it, place two power on it. Otherwise, Juan unloads. And unload, it says, a fighter within four spaces of Juan that is not engaged with him discards one power from this card and Juan deals that fighter four general damage. So we're going to discard a power from the card and he's going to deal us four general damage. So I'm going to block with a kick defense token since this is general and you can block it with anything. And then I'm going to take three damage, which brings Natalia up to four damage on her. On alert does not activate because it involves the fighter moving towards Juan and not Juan moving towards the fighter. So now the enemy's activated. We're going to activate the stage. And it says, each enemy carrying an objective moves three spaces towards the nearest entry space. Well, no enemy is carrying an objective currently. So we'll move on. Distribution network says, for each inactive objective, choose the enemy nearest it that is not carrying an objective. Move the chosen enemy three spaces toward that objective. Then exhaust each minion moved this way. So the boss is going to move and get the objective. And we'll place it on his card. Next, we need to draw a card from the supply and demand pile. Crossfire event. Each figure not in a cover space suffers one direct damage. Well, that is both me and Juan. So I'm going to take a damage, moving me up to five. And Juan will take a damage that he cannot block since it's a, it is direct. It is important to note that when carrying an objective, it says after a figure carrying this objective suffers any amount of damage, that figure must discard one defense token. If, it, and if unable to, they have to drop this objective. So Juan is actually going to have to drop, not drop, um, discard a defense token. And we get to choose, um, we'll choose the grapple. Additionally on this card, then it says, then each fighter in a cover space may draw one card. If no fighters are in a cover space, draw one stage card. So we will go ahead and draw another stage card. Kingpin Rising. The boss gains two random defense tokens for each power on distribution network. Okay, well that's good, there's none. And then each fighter in a cover space chooses a different enemy carrying an objective, if able. Each chosen enemy moves one space toward the entry space nearest it. Well, I'm not in a cover space, so that does not do anything. That's good. We now move on to round number two. We're going to draw a card. And this is a minion, Ignacio. He does not come into play with any defense tokens. If he did, there would be symbols here. He has six health and he, he rolls two dice when he attacks. When he activates, it says deal the farthest fighter within five spaces of this enemy, one general damage for each defense token this enemy has. Advance three spaces toward the nearest fighter, attack, and then retreat two spaces. Then if this enemy has no defense tokens, it gains three random defense tokens. So he will come into play in my threat area we will grab the purple Ignacio and he will spawn on the board at the nearest entry point. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he will spawn right here. At this time, my cards will refresh. So Zane will refresh so I can use him again. So my first step is going to be a move step and I'm going to move to get into cover. So I'm going to go one, two. You don't have to use your full three moves. You can just use up to three moves. Then I'm going to play this Razor's Edge card. It's an ability, so it's not going to stay in play. If you are unengaged, attack with two red dice. This attack may target an enemy within five spaces of you, dealing a single type of damage of your choice, kick, punch, or grapple. So I'm going to choose to target 
even though both Ignacio and Juan are uh, within five spaces, I'm going to choose to hit Juan. And I'm going to make it be uh, punch damage because I don't want him to be able to block it. Currently, he only has a kick defense. So I get two punch defense tokens and I deal no damage to Juan. So for my action step, I don't really want to move because I'm in cover. So I'm going to play the action of infiltrate, which says reveal the top card of any fighter deck. Then either put that card into play or discard it. So it's a tactic card. Perfect. So I immediately get to put this into play. And this card is going to give me plus one on my attacks going further. And it's going to give me another action to use during my turn. It also gives us a feint, which we talked about in setup. We didn't see it, but we talked about it. When this is in play, I can discard this card to do this ability. Don't forget, you can use the exhaust ability on your cards in play as sort of like a free action. Right now, Infiltrate, I can't exhaust it because if unengaged, return one stealth card from your discard pile to your hand. I don't have any stealth cards in my discard pile. So now we move on to the React phase and we're gonna activate cards from left to right. So we're gonna activate Pin Down. It says, if you are not in a cover space, this card deals you one direct damage. If you are in a cover space, gain one random defense token. So we'll roll a die. And I got another punch defense token. So that gives me three punch defense tokens. Then Ignacio is going to activate. And he says, deal the farthest fighter within five spaces of this enemy. One, two, three, four, five. So I am in there. One general damage for each defense token this enemy has. So that's currently zero. Advance three spaces toward the nearest fighter attack and then retreat two spaces so he can't do that so he'll just stay put then if this enemy has no defense tokens it gains three random defense tokens so we'll get three white die and he has two punch and a grapple so we'll place them on him and we'll go ahead and draw a card disarm Attack with two dice. After resolving this attack, you may discard one card controlled by the target or draw one card. So Juan is going to activate and it says, if engaged, Juan attacks, retreats two spaces and gains one random defense token. Otherwise, Juan gains two random defense tokens and moves up to three spaces to be within four spaces of the nearest fighter. So he'll gain a kick and a grapple, and we'll go ahead and put those in his player area, giving him two kicks defense and a grapple defense. And he's already four spaces away from Antalya, so he'll just stay put. His flintlock carbine is gonna activate, and it says to unload. So a fighter within four spaces of one that is not engaged with him discards one power from this card and is dealt four general damage. So I am dealt four general damage. I'm going to block it with three of my punch defense tokens which then makes them all power ups. So now we have four out of our six, and then we, we are dealt one more damage. So now we're at six of 18. Once again, his on alert card, the far right does not activate because we do not move within two of him. All right, moving on to the stage rules. Activate each enemy carrying an objective moves three spaces towards the nearest entry space. So one, one, two, three. One, two, three. So Juan will actually successfully remove the contraband from the board. Because it says, after a figure carrying this objective enters a space within one space of an entry space, which he's currently doing, discard this objective token, place one power on distribution network, and shuffle this card with the stage discard pile back into the stage deck. So I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so we are one fifth of the way from losing. He only needs four more power tokens on distribution network to be the true kingpin of Street Masters. We still need to draw a supply and demand card, so we'll do that now. Drive by event. This card deals each fighter not in a cover space two general damage and one direct damage. Thank goodness I'm in a cover space. If there is no inactive token in play, draw one stage card. Oh, wow. For my second stage card, Crossfire. 
Each figure not in a cover space suffers one direct damage. That's figure, not fighter. Whenever cards reference fighters, that's only the good guys. Figures represent everyone. So both Juan and Ignacio are not in cover spaces. So they're going to suffer one direct damage. Place one on Juan. And place one on Ignacio. Remember that the direct damage cannot be blocked. Then each fighter in a cover space may draw a card. So we draw Commando. We currently have one in play, so we'll just keep that in our hand, and maybe we can use it for discard effects from other cards that we play. All right, I think we're ready to move back to the fighter turn and start round three. So we would refresh any cards in our player area, but we don't have any exhausted, and we're going to draw a threat from the cartel deck. Get away, event. Remove one from the map and place them in the empty space nearest the entry space that is furthest from any fighter. Then one unloads. So the entry space one is going to move to, and I was just about to use my Molotov cocktail on both of these guys, is right here. And then we would activate Juan's unload ability on his Flintlight Carbine. Unloads as a fighter within four spaces of Juan that is not engaged with him discards one power from this card. One deals that fighter for general damage. Thankfully, we're not close. So I'm going to move three spaces to be a little closer to one, as well as get into some more cover. So I'm going to move one, two, three. For my action step, I'm actually going to do a sprint. And I'm going to go try to get some more loot. So I'm going to move one, two, three. Now this does put me in some danger as I'm not in cover currently. But hopefully we don't draw too many bad not in cover effects. All right, for my loot, I draw sneakers. Discard this card during your, let me see if I get this focus, during your kick attack to add plus two dice to that attack. First thing I'm gonna do is exhaust Zane and choose a fighter to draw a card and then shuffle one card back into their deck. So I'm gonna get Rush B which is my second one of these, so I'm actually going to shuffle this back into my deck. For my card action, I'm going to play a Rush B that says when you move up, you may move up to four spaces. Each time you enter a space during this movement, you may attack with one red die, dealing direct damage. Each of these attacks deals plus one direct damage if you, if you have not attacked that target yet this turn. So I'm going to move one, two, and now I can attack. And because of my commando card that's currently in play, my attacks gain plus one dice. So I'm going to roll two dice. I got a crit and a success, so I get to roll again. So I have three damage I'm dealing, and since I have not attacked him yet, this is the first time I'm, ta I'm attacking him this turn, I'm dealing four direct damage. Juan is at six health left. I'm going to move again for my third one. Once again, I'm going to roll two dice. That's two direct damage to him, so we'll give him two more damage, moving him up to eight. And then for my fourth and final move, I'm going to go ahead and move onto this loot crate. Let's see what I get. It's a lead pipe. Discard this card to deal three direct damage to an adjacent enemy. Well, that's fantastic. So now that we've done the fighter act phase, we're going to move on to the react phase, and we're going to activate these cards from left to right. So pin down. If you are not in the cover space, this card deals you one direct damage. So I'll go ahead and take that, moving me up to a total of seven out of 18 damage I've taken. Ignacio is going to activate. So he's going to advance three spaces toward the nearest fighter, attack, and then retreat two spaces. So I, don't, I might have played that wrong uh, the first time with him. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So one, two, three. He would try to attack, but he can't. So he will retreat two spaces. Then if this enemy has no defense tokens, it gains three random defense tokens. Well, he does have defense tokens. 
All right, and then we will draw one card. We have a recon, which gives us two in our hand, and this allows us to cancel enemy attacks, which will be good since our health is running a little bit low. All right, so now it's time to activate the enemies. So Juan is going to activate and gain two random defense tokens, a grapple grapple, we'll add that to his player area, giving him three grapple defense to go along with his two kick defense. And then it says he moves up to three spaces to be within four spaces of the nearest fighter. So he will move back one, two. One, two, three, four. The carbine is going to activate. If this card has no power on it, place two power on it. Ah, I forgot about on alert. Tactic. When a fighter moves into a space adjacent to Juan, he retreats three spaces from that fighter. If he retreated, Juan then gains two random defense tokens, unloads, and discard this card. But he could not have retreated. So although I missed activating on alert uh, when I moved adjacent to him, he was supposed to retreat three spaces from that fighter. Fortunately for us, he was standing here and I was standing here. Bad guys will always retreat directly opposite of where your character is. So he would have tried to retreat it and he would have tried to retreat off the board so he would not have retreated. So, actually nothing would have happened. All right, time to activate the stage area. Each enemy carrying an objective moves three spaces toward the nearest entry space. And there are none. And then distribution network for each inactive location. Choose the enemy nearest th that is not carrying an objective. Move the chosen enemy three spaces toward the objective. Then exhaust each minion move this way. Thankfully, there are no objectives on the board currently. So we will go ahead and draw a supply and demand card. Kingpin Rising, the boss gains two random defense tokens for each power on distribution network. Each fighter in a cover space chooses a different enemy, carry objective. Each chosen enemy moves one space toward the entry space nearest. So we don't have to worry about the second part there, but the boss is going to gain two random defense tokens for each power. So he's going to gain two random defense tokens. A grapple and a kick. So he's now at four grapple and three kick. So this means we really want to use punch attacks. That, folks, will conclude episode one. Come back as we continue our journey. I think we're in decent shape. I didn't like our start. I thought we, were, we had a very slow start, but we currently have eight damage on the boss. We are at seven damage out of 18, but we are only two power up away from charging up and going to our other side. And... We have lots of loot that we can discard and do special effects to hopefully deal direct damage to avoid these grapple and kick defense tokens that Juan has currently.